I'm in my workshop and I'm building my own light aeroplane. So far, so good. Does that look the business or what? There's something lovely about a brand new engine, isn't it? Moment of truth now. Welcome my plane building chumps to a plane is born. Just doing a little bit of sanding here. Very important job that takes a very long time to do because the paint, when this gets painted, will not stick to this very shiny fiberglass. The whole lot has to be scuff sanded with 80 grit paper to be able to take the paint and the filler. It's a job you don't want to tackle all in one go, let me tell you, because it will drive you completely crazy. So you do it in little bits and it's a chance to think about that job that I really don't want to do, which is wiring up my instrument panel. So a bit more scuff sanding. Well clearly it's not that complicated is it because the white wire connects to the white wire to the white wire to the white wire. Very simple. Later. You know the problem is there is no later. If I want to fly this thing I've got to build an instrument panel so it's throw away the grip paper and have a look at my instrument panel. This is how it comes from the manufacturer. It's already pre-made and shaped. The instruments will go in here, the radios and stuff go in this side. And the prep of it is quite easy, but before you can do anything to it, you need to know what instruments you're going to put in. Now, one of the great things about flying is all the magazines, because you can have a look through them. And you know when you're like, shopping for hi-fi and things like that, you want all the knobs and the dials and the lights and all that stuff? Well, it's a dream when you have a look through all these magazines. So bear with me, I need to choose my instruments. Oh, yes like the outside world with the horizon. I definitely need one of those. And below it is a direction indicator, which we need as well. And here is the airspeed indicator. And I better know how high I am. Good idea, I think. So, an altimeter. So, that's about my limit as far as instruments is concerned. So, I'm going to get some help on this one find out what else I could have. And while I'm finding that person, take a look at Bob Harrison's Europa. It's a monowheel, and it took him two and a half thousand hours to build. The aircraft is a Europa, um, home built. It is originally built with a monowheel principle with uh, an alternative enabling, enabling it to go to Trigate. I think it's taken me in the region of um, two and a half thousand hours. All my private time, um, evening times, kept me away from TV, thank goodness. Uh, weekend working, um, every spare minute that I've got, or I've had, has gone into working on the plane over the three years I've been doing it. I think really on the uh, difficulty side was getting used to using composite uh, materials. It's the first time I've ever done any fiberglass work, although I served my time as an apprentice at Rolls-Royce Aero Engines, uh, I'd never done any uh, composite work whatsoever, and I found that very interesting. You can make a lot of shortcuts by seeing how other people have gone on. Uh, there was a syndicate of five building another aircraft about uh, five mile away and I started about two years after them um, so it was extremely useful being able to pop across and, and see them working together I mean the capability of the aircraft is, is approaching 200 miles an hour 700 mile range and um, one of the most dear things that I want to do I used to have in-law lived at Thurso, right on the north coast of Scotland, which is 500 miles away. And I want to pop up there for a long weekend. Right, I'm going to keep the plane in the garage at home. The wings are demountable. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to do maintenance work myself. Um, save the expensive business of parking an aircraft on a, an airfield. Uh, best advice to people who are thinking of doing uh, uh, such a project 
is to make sure they've done their, their money calculations before they embark on it, uh, make sure that the wife's comfortable with it, and, and be prepared to eliminate all other interests while they're doing it. Robin, he's here to help me. From Adams Aviation, they sell all this kit. You know the people who come around and sell you mops and buckets and that kind of stuff? Well, Robin's the kind of aeronautical equivalent of that. He comes around with loads of kit. Look at this, it's fantastic. I've got a picture here to help us of the instrument panel that's been put in a previous Europa. So we can have that here. Now, what else do I need to think about as the absolute essentials? Well, as you said, Mark, the, the, the four basic instruments, they're the four the, the main ones that we'll use in any installation whatsoever. Recommended would be two... Two others, uh, a turn coordinator, for instance, uh, on your bottom left here. Right. And uh, maybe a VSI, a vertical speed indicator. Oh, right, a turn coordinator is the, right. the ball in it, isn't That's it? That's right. Six. Where do I go from there? Okay, well, there you've got, um, basically, you want some avionics. Um, what, is it, what, what does avionics actually mean, though? Does it not cover all these things as well? No, I mean, we look at these as instruments. Right. Um, the avionics are basically your communications, your navigation, equipment, um, the, the various there's, there's many types of equipment come under the heading of avionics right. um, from GPS to, to basic comms, GPS. handhelds that type of thing um, and again that's entirely up to you okay. a basic comm system we've got a couple here that are actually instrument size comms oh, that's tiny. if you have problem with room in the panel these things are brilliant Again, here we've got some various uh, GPS systems. GPS has been the single biggest leap forward in navigation over the last decade for uh, aviation, um, using satellites that are running around in the sky. One of the biggest worries for me is when you're flying, there's a lot to think about as a kind of junior novice pilot. And you're doing a bit of navigation, you end up over town, you think it's, say, Evesham, but you're not sure. And you're trying to keep your height, you're trying to keep, you know, everything else sorted out in the plane. And it's that real, well, is this Evesham or not? And you're trying to look at, you know, every time I look at my map, I start descending. Hmm. Would a GPS be something that would actually, I could just look at it and just cross-check and go, oh, yeah, it's exactly where I thought I was. Fine, bang, I can carry on flying. Absolutely. It's, it's the... You know, the single biggest advantage of having a GPS, you'll have, as you say, their Evesham or whatever. All these towns will come up on, on your map. You'll be exactly, um, you have an arrow basically telling you exactly where you are in the sky and exactly what's under you. Railways, rivers, towns, uh, it basically down to whatever um, accuracy you want. And how much? About £350. Gosh, that's not bad for a sophisticated bit of kit like that, is it? Smashing piece of kit. Okay. We're using an a intercom. This particular one is a, a stereo intercom. Right, so this is for just for me to talk to, talk to the passenger. Pilot, yeah. passenger yeah. Um, Frankly, I don't think I'm going to need one of those because okay. I, don't, I don't know anybody who's going to be brave enough to come flying with me. No, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, although I might take Pete, mate. You'll come with me, won't you, Pete? Uh, no, no way. Charming, isn't it? Absolute, you're on your own, mate. Absolutely charming. But I ought to have one just in case, shouldn't I? Oh, absolutely, really? yeah. yeah. So that's a fairly simple bit of kit, presumably. I'm yeah, just... and if you have a CD player or whatever in the aeroplane, you get bored, listen to some music, you can listen to it through that, and that will give you in stereo. You are joking. You're not allowed to listen to CDs in your plane? Absolutely. It's, you... got, a, it's, it's, got, an, it's, <laughs> it's got an automatic cut-off if there is any transmission through. So the air board traffic board. control? Yeah. Superb. Bruce Springsteen in the air. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> I've got to have that! I definitely want one of those. All right, now, this is all fairly complicated stuff, really. Um, you don't know anybody who could help me wire it up. Well, it's a tough yeah. one. But uh, there, there, there's, there's, there's a colleague in, down in Biggin Hill, where we're from, that uh, I could put you in touch with. He's done a, probably about seven or eight of these panels. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Is he cheap? Very excellent. Well, Robin's been a real help, and I now know exactly what instruments I want. So the next job is to start preparing the instrument panel to take the instruments themselves, and that involves marking it up and then cutting out, using hole cutters like these, the holes to put the instruments in. So I'll crack on with that right now. Oh, I bet you're wondering how much I spent on instruments, aren't you? Well, I can't tell you because it's too painful. So, um... holes to attach 
the um, gauge in there. Neville from the factory. You remember Neville? Nice bloke, dodgy haircut. Well, he lent me this jig that he's made up. I've marked it up already where I want it to lie. That sits in the hole like that. Just dial it round until it meets the marks. And then from underneath, the bolt goes through. So it comes up like that. That's it. Sorted. And all I've got to do is drill it through. Now, although I completely hate sanding down this beast, I'm doing it because I'm in a bit of a quandary about my instrument panel. It's ready to accept the instruments, but I am very worried about whether it should be me who actually wires it all up because it's a very important part of the plane and I've spent a fortune on it and I want to get it absolutely right, if only for safety reasons. So should I do it myself or should I get in an avionics expert? Find out after the break. Welcome back. Call me a wimp, if you will. You're a wimp. Thank you very much. But I decided to get some help. And what you can hear in the background is Ash from AM Avionics, who's helped me put together this panel. And it's coming along really well, isn't it? Yeah, I'm very pleased with it. We've just Excellent. Got a few take, more things take a look at this here. If you think this looks impressive, then take a look at the guts of the thing. Now that is one very good reason why it's worth bringing in somebody to help you do this. What's the big mistakes that people make when they start thinking about doing their own instruments? Well, I think they don't see the whole job through. You need to know exactly what equipment you're going to put in it before you make the first cut. And then don't vary, no variation from that point on. Well, do you find that people sort of go, oh yeah, I've got it all sorted, I know what I'm going to do, and they get kind of halfway into it and go, oh, I want one of those there. Absolutely. And it's a limited area. And there's not a lot of space there, really. You have to have your six instruments there. You've got a small area there for avionics. Choose once and that's it. What we've got to do next? We've got the DI to go in. Correct. That's the last instrument there. Okay. And then just some radios. All right. So the DI, we've got the unit is there. That's the, the one DI there, yeah. Okay, that's the brand new one. Now, what's inside the DI? Well, we've got a cutout there. So to give you an idea, it's a, a gyro, which is vacuum driven. And basically air is sucked into the instrument which rotates that gyro Good. and from that through a, a few gears you get a card rotating there so that's pretty much how the gyro works basically right. so when that's in place then the whole of the inside of that's got the vacuum running through it that's right yeah. okay. there's two vacuum in, uh, driven instruments there's this and the artificial horizon okay which we've got there which is the mm -hmm. other cutter which is an amazing instrument isn't it sure again that, that's a gyro there but it's free moving it's not fixed like the uh, it's fixed in one plane. Yeah. And again, if you move that, okay. and this instrument gives you pitch and roll information. Because the gyros here are basically in relation to planet Earth. They're in space. So wherever you go with this instrument fixed to your aircraft, this will always stay in the right plane. So as you're moving around, I mean, when it's set like this, it hasn't got the vacuum going. It just sits on a tilt. Yes. It's only when the gyro is actually spinning. They're no, actually erect. Yeah. yeah. So it's a superb, really clever bit of engineering beautiful instrument mm. really lovely so that's that we've got we've already got that one in there so should we pop the di in? sure we can do that now okay i've got the screws this side i'll just put the old shaft shaft through there can i just say this is a really really woofy <laughs> color for a screwdriver well no one steals it <laughs> now you'll notice look that every screw has been painted as well with the same stuff as the actual instrument panel this surface finish on here is fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, it's a Nextel suede coat paint. It's very hard wearing, light, ideal for the job, really. Do some people put, you know, said I want you know, leather covering sure. or whatever? Sure, it depends on your taste. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen panels with full leather, which looks very nice, but uh, this is functional. Well, presumably, you add leather on there, it adds weight, and the whole point of this plane is to make it as light Absolutely. as, light yeah. as possible. So. Yeah. You want to keep it, keep it down to a minimum. Right, well, it's fantastic. Right. So first, transponder, yeah? That's right, yep. So just take me through how this works. Air traffic control, interrogate the aeroplane. This sends out a signal to let air traffic control, control know where you are. So that's what provides a blip so on the screen, is it? Correct, yeah. ATC will okay. tell you to squawk a code, and they may say squawk 7234, so you select that on your dials there, and then that code is transmitted to the ground, and they have a PPI display, 
and map basically the sky and tell them where you are. And the codes here then you can also use in an emergency situation, can't That's you? That's right, yeah. And yeah. there's this lovely rhyme that you learn about, which says 75, which is 7,500 caught alive, which means you've been hijacked. 76, which is 7,600, means in a fix, your radio's broken. And 77, 7,700 is going to heaven, mayday, something very serious has just happened to your aeroplane. Sure. So it's a very, very important bit of kit. It is, yes. Yeah. Okay. Next is the radio. Yep, it's a VHF comm radio. Operates between 118 and 136 megahertz. And there's 25 kilohertz spacing, which gives you the 760 channels. You can actually set uh, 10 frequencies in the memory. So if you've uh, got a flight plan and you know you're going to go through different spaces and use different frequencies, you can set those, preset the frequencies into the radio. Right. And by pressing that button there, you can just select 1 to 10. Oh, that's frequency good. You like, yeah. Looks of the business. Now, we've pretty much finished the actual panel itself. That's we? right, yeah. So what's next? Now we have to interface the panel with the hey, aircraft. Hey, <laughs> avionics, we've got to so, interface absolutely. the panel with the plane. That's right. We have Ooh, to... you like. <laughs> we need uh, engine monitoring systems, right. all, the, all the sensors for the engine gauges, a battery so we can power the thing up, antennas, cables for the radio and the transponder. So there's a lot to do. There is. So get on with it, you're costing me a fortune. Fine. Thank you very much. Go interface, Ash. <laughs> You join me at uh, 2,000 feet. I'm now flying a twin, which is very interesting. But as you can see, it's extremely foggy. And I can't actually see where I'm going, so I'm having to try and fly by instruments. Oh, hell, I can't be bothered with this. Are we going to crash? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not, because we're in a simulator. Hello! Yes, here we are. This is brilliant. This is just like flying for real. But you yeah. obviously can't see anything. Yeah. So everything that you have to really, really focus on the instruments. Normally, when you're flying, for like doing a PPL, yep. you can only fly in visual meteorological conditions. Correct. Just explain what that means. Well, basically, it means that you can see out the window. So, why do I need to know about how to fly just on the instruments when you can't see out the window? Right, it was part, part and parcel of the, the, the new JAR uh, PPL skills test now, uh, quite a sensible addition, is that if you inadvertently get into cloud, um, you don't want you don't to put you in a, in a situation that you're totally unfamiliar with and totally unprepared for. So uh, it's quite easy to get into, into cloud, although you know, we should always do our best to avoid it. So we need to install some training that would, na would enable you to just to make a s straightforward turn to get through 180 degrees to get out of that um, cloud situation that you're in. Right. So that's what we're going to have a look at. Let's make this as uh, some part and parcel of the test scenario. So you're just flying into cloud, Denmark. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I need to come out of cloud as quickly as possible. Okay. So I need to turn through 180 degrees. Good. So the first thing I'm going to do is to do 180 degrees. I'm going Good. to stick that so I know where I've got to go to. Right. So I just check everything. The moment that's that's right. Ball is in the middle. It's okay. I know where I've got to go. I'm level and I'm at 4,100 feet. So I'm now going to do a left turn. So. Got, that's okay, I'm turning left, I'm at my 15 degree angle of bank, it's okay, I am turning in the right direction towards my heading, okay. I'm climbing, so just okay. pitch forward, pitch forward, so it's the angle of bank, airspeed's okay, 15 degrees, still turning, I'll need to anticipate that in a minute, I'm not climbing or dropping, Altitude's okay. I want to anticipate my heading by half angular bank, which is seven and a half degrees. So it's coming up to well wings level. I probably left that too late. Okay, now I'm creeping off my heading here, so I need to turn slightly left. Speed's okay. Good. So, it's a normal. Not climbing. Height's okay. Ball's in the middle. Airspeed's alright. That is really exhausting though. Yeah. So you wouldn't want to do it for very long with your hand flying. Because your eyes are. I can almost feel them like bulging from constantly. And how often. I mean, in this scanning. Yeah. 
that you literally virtually you, you're never your eyes are never off these instruments so you're Absolutely. always going bang 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 bang, 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 bang. For a few seconds you may have to, to change the same radio settings or to check other instruments uh, such as your T's and P's but generally it's back. If they're not doing that they're doing something else so right. the, the concentration is quite, it's quite heavy. Back to my plane and just look at this baby here it's the business in my plane. I've got all the stuff here for flying it and on this side here we've got all the comms which we want to test don't we because it looks the business and we switch it on and oh my word I can hear yeah I can hear me speak to yeah, me Ash. I can hear you loud and clear. Fantastic stuff we've got the frequencies up that's working flip flop flip flop flip flop flip flop I love it now up here this will cut us in and out because this is a yeah it's the voice activation circuit on the intercom right cuts out all the ambient noise when the mics aren't active right so, so we just set it at the point where it'll come in every time we talk that's great now that's set Transponders all sorted. Yep. Fantastic. Turn that around. The light comes on. That's testing. Fantastic. Now down here, the business. Yep. Gone for the full Monty on the GPS. You've got your GPS. Oh yes, this is the business. Fantastic. I can even take this out and put it in my car. It's that good. So we're acquiring satellites. Any minute now. It we'll should know. tell us where we are. Hopefully. Okay. Come on. Here we go. Oh yes, we're on. And there it is. Fantastic. Right, so we're ready to go. Let's go. Tuning 125.65, please. Who's doing that? I'll put the QNH to 1005. Set the transponder to 7000. 7, Check flaps, please. But there's no wings, Mark. Detail, detail. Use your imagination. We're taking off. Here we go. <laughs> we're going up, we're going up. Look, I have see... Oh, I see the whole of England. Fantastic. Oh, do you like my plane? <laughs> Going right, going right, going right, going right, banking, 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 don't I'm in my workshop and I'm building my own light aeroplane. So far, so good. Does that look the business or what? There's something lovely about a brand new engine, isn't it? Moment of truth. Now. Welcome my plane building chumps to a plane is born. Just doing a little bit of sanding here. Very important job that takes a very long time to do because the paint, when this gets painted, will not stick to this very shiny fiberglass. The whole lot has to be scuff sanded with 80 grit paper to be able to take the paint and the filler. It's a job you don't want to tackle all in one go, let me tell you, because it will drive you completely crazy. So you do it in little bits and it's a chance to think about that job that I really don't want to do, which is wiring up my instrument panel. So a bit more scuff sanding. Well clearly it's not that complicated is it? Because the white wire connects to the white wire, to the white wire, to the white wire. Very simple. Later. You know the problem is, there is no later. If I want to fly this thing, I've got to build an instrument panel. So it's throw away the grip paper and have a look at my instrument panel. This is how it comes from the manufacturer. It's already pre-made and shaped. The instruments will go in here, the radios and stuff will go in this side. And the prep of it is quite easy, but before you can do anything to it, you need to know what instruments you're going to put in. Now, one of the great things about flying is all the magazines. Seeing how the people have gone on. Uh, there was a syndicate of five building another aircraft about uh, five mile away. And I started about two years after them. Um, so it was extremely useful being able to pop across and, and see them working together. I mean, the capability of the aircraft is, is approaching 200 miles an hour, 700 mile range, and um, 
one of the most dear things that I want to do. I used to have an in-law lived at Thurso, right in the north coast of Scotland, which is 500 miles away. And I want to pop up there for a long weekend. Right, I'm going to keep the plane in the garage at home. The wings are demountable. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to do maintenance work myself. Um, save the expensive business of parking an aircraft on a, an airfield. Uh, best advice to people who are thinking of doing uh, uh, such a project is to make sure they've done their, their money calculations before they embark on it. Uh, make sure that the wife's comfortable with it and, and be prepared to eliminate all other interests while they're doing it. Robin. He's here to help me. From Adams Aviation, they sell all this kit. You know the people who come around and sell you mops and buckets and that kind of stuff? Well, Robin's the kind of aeronautical equivalent of that. He comes around with loads of kit. Look at this, it's fantastic. I've got a picture here to help us of the instrument panel that's been put in a previous Europa. So we can have that here. Now, what else do I need to think about as the absolute essentials? Well, stuff? as you said, Mark, the, the, the four basic instruments, they're the four the, the main ones that we'll use in any installation whatsoever. Recommended would be two... Two others, uh, a turn coordinator, for instance, uh, on your bottom left here. Right. And uh, maybe a VSI, a vertical speed indicator. All oh, right, the turn coordinator is the, right. the ball in it, isn't That's it? That's right. Six. Where do I go from there? Okay, well, there you've got, um, basically, you want some avionics. Um, what, is it, what, what does avionics actually mean, though? Does it not cover all these things as well? No, I mean, we look at these as instruments. Right. Um, the avionics are basically your communications, your navigation, equipment. Um, the, the various, there's, there's many types of equipment come under the heading of avionics, right. um, from GPS to, to basic comms, GPS. handhelds, that type of thing. Um, and again, that's entirely up to you. Okay. A basic comm system, we've got a couple here that are actually instrument size comms. God, that's tiny. If you have problem with room in the panel, these things are brilliant. Again, here we've got some various uh, GPS systems. GPS has been the single biggest leap forward in navigation over the last decade for uh, aviation um, using satellites that are running around in the sky. One of the biggest worries for me is when you're flying there's a lot to think about as a kind of junior novice pilot and you're doing a bit of navigation you end up over town you think it's say Evesham but you're not sure and you're trying to keep your height you're trying to keep you know everything else sorted out in the plane and it's that really what well, is this Evesham or not and you're trying to look at you know, every time I look at my map I start descending hmm. would a GPS be something that would actually, I could just look at it and just cross-check it and go, oh yeah, it's exactly where I thought I was. Fine, bang, I can carry on flying. Absolutely. It's, it's the, you know, the single biggest advantage of having a GPS. You'll have, as you say, their Evesham or whatever. All these towns will come up on, on your map. You'll be exactly, um, you, you have an arrow basically telling you exactly where you are in the sky and exactly what's under you. Railways, rivers, towns, uh, it basically down to whatever um, accuracy you want. And how much? About £350. Gosh, that's not bad for a sophisticated bit of kit like that, is it? Smashing piece of kit. Okay. We're using a, an intercom. This particular one is a, a stereo intercom. Right, so this is for just for me to talk to the passenger. passenger. Yeah. Passenger, yeah. Um, Frankly, I don't think I'm going to need one of those because okay. I, don't, I don't know anybody who's going to be brave enough to come flying with me. No, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, although I might take Pete, mate. You'll come with me, won't you, Pete? Uh, no, no way. Charming, isn't it? Absolute, You're on your own, mate. Absolutely charming. But I ought to have one just in case, shouldn't I? Oh, absolutely, really? yeah. yeah. So that's a fairly simple bit of kit, presumably. Yes. Yeah. And if you have a CD player or whatever in the aeroplane, you get bored, listen to some music, you can listen to it through that and that will give you in stereo. You are joking. You're not allowed to listen to CDs in your plane? Absolutely. It's got, a, it's, it's, got an, it's, <laughs> it's got an automatic cut-off if there is any transmission through. Through air traffic forward. control? Yeah. Superb. Bruce Springsteen in the air. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> I've got to have that! I definitely want one of those. All right, now, this is all fairly complicated stuff, really. Um, you don't know anybody who could help me wire it up. Well, it's a tough yeah. one. But uh, there, there, there's, there's, there's a colleague in, down in Biggin Hill, where we're from, that uh, I could put you in touch with. He's done uh, probably about seven or eight of these panels. Mm -hmm. and uh, Yeah. Is he cheap? Very excellent. Well, Robin's been a real help, and I now know exactly what instruments I want. So the next job is to start preparing the instrument panel to take the instruments themselves, and that involves marking it up and then cutting out, using hole cutters like these, the holes to put the instruments in. So I'll crack on with that right now. 
Oh, I bet you're wondering how much I've spent on instruments, aren't you? Well, I can't tell you because it's too painful. So, um... Drill the holes to attach the um, gauge in there. Neville from Zines, because you can have a look through them. And you know when you're like, shopping for hi-fi and things like that, you want all the knobs and the dials and the lights and all that stuff? Well, it's a dream when you have a look through all these magazines. So bear with me, I need to choose my instruments. Oh, yes. Looks like the outside world with the horizon. I definitely need one of those. And below it is a direction indicator, which we need as well. Up here is the airspeed indicator and I better know how high I am. Good idea, I think, so an altimeter. So that's about my limit as far as instruments is concerned. So I'm going to get some help on this one, find out what else I could have. And while I'm finding that person, take a look at Bob Harrison's Europa. It's a mono wheel, and it took him two and a half thousand hours to build. The aircraft is a Europa, um, home built. It is originally built with a monowheel principle with uh, an alternative enabling, enabling it to go to Trigear. I think it's taken me in the region of um, two and a half thousand hours. All my private time, um, evening times, kept me away from TV, thank goodness. Uh, weekend working, um, every spare minute that I've got, or I've had has gone into working on the plane over the three years I've been doing it. I think really on the uh, difficulty side was getting used to using composite uh, materials. It's the first time I've ever done any fiberglass work, although I served my time as an apprentice at Rolls-Royce Air Engines, uh, I'd never done any uh, composite work whatsoever, and I found that very interesting. You can make a lot of shortcuts 